I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the graphics. The cheap ass heat gun. Remove this, all these graphics, all these graphics. You preheat it nicely, take your time, and it'll come off in a nice sheet. I found that getting a uh, tan lock, something that'll get in there at an angle and get close to the rivet, it allows you to pull it um, past the rivet head. Actually, break the rivet head off. This thing on the bottom is very ugly. I'm going to take it out and sand it down and repaint it. These are held on by three screws like this um, from the inside. Okay, four. There's four of them. I gotta get the last one. Almost all stripped down. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna clean this up real good and hit it with the DA sander. I'm not gonna take this off. I'm just gonna tape it off. I don't. I don't really care. Um, get the engine uh, covered up, the electronics covered up, and I'm gonna hit it with water and scrub it down. I got it cleaned up and I got this whole sandy thing started. I probably should use fiberglass filler, but this is what I had on hand. JB Weld. And that's what I used to fill the holes. It actually worked pretty good. I need to top it off. It shrank a little bit in spots. <clears throat> I don't care so much here because this is where the um, the uh, the grip uh, material is going to go. But everywhere else there's a nick. I'm going to uh, fill it in with the uh, JB Weld up here. Sand it down a little bit. Fill it in. Any little spots here. And I need to knock this stuff down. Put too much on here. Really, I should use a card and uh, make sure there's no overlap here because you're going to see that through the paint. All right, it's very important for everything to be dull. So, there are some areas still got a little bit of sheen to them. So, I'm going to go back and hand sand those areas. A lot of times, it'll happen in the corner, but as you see, for the most part, it's pretty All right, So, the ski is pretty much totally dull. I don't think I see any more shiny spots. Well, there's a little one here. here. So here's my bootleg makeshift spray booth. Bootleg style. I'd paint outside, but it's too windy right now. So, so this is what I got. This is what I got going on. So I wiped it down with some lacquer thinner. I'm not gonna tag it. I don't really care about that for this project anyway. This primer and high build is four to one. Four to one to one. I want to thin it out a bit. I might add a little bit of thinner. Um, okay, uh, like for paint stirrers, um, a lot of times you get them for free. Like, see, so you get a um, membership. Some places give out uh, free uh, stirrers, and uh, just grab a handful as you leave. Got my respirator. Put a cover on the virus up in here. I got the. Uh, Paint gun filled with primer. Got my water filter, got my air supply. About to spray this thing up. I'm gonna do a light coat and then I'm gonna do it heavy.
color on. It's not perfect, but that's fine. Well, here's my bootleg ass paint job. I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, let this dry for a day and then I'll wet sand it down and polish it out. I got a lot of, uh, a lot of texture in there. Not a big deal. Nothing to polish that won't fix. For the top portion here, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take this off so I can pull the gauges out and then I'll prep this top and uh, prime it up and paint it. And all these disconnected. I'm uh, rubbing this down with the scrub pad here and then I'll uh, hit it with a little bit of spray primer, sand it down and fill these in with the glazed putty. I have all the parts scrubbed down, a little bit of nick touching up. I'm going to spray it with some sealer. I ran out of epoxy primer, so I don't really need to prime it anyway. With the with the epoxy primer, the sealer will work just fine. Um, once I do that, then I'll, I'll fix all these these nicks. But yeah, let me uh, spray it up here. Luke, I am your father. Got the clear on it. Two heavy coats, so I can still buff it out if I want to. As for these plastic parts, I'm going to hit them up with some Raptor liner. I'm going to thin it out and spray it in the paint gun. I sprayed this with thinned out Raptor liner. It's really good. Same for this cover. I'm gonna go ahead and lay these um, this padding out here, and I'll take a uh, probably a marker. No, actually, what I'll do, I'll lay the pads out. I'm gonna lay this asphalt turf out where I want it. Then I'm gonna mark the areas and uh, outline it in tape, probably. So I'm gonna put I'll roll glue on the the uh, padding itself and this uh, substrate here. So. It's a, it's a very secure uh, connect. Get the hydro turf lined up. Nice and evenly spaced out. And I'm going to hit it with a Sharpie around the whole, around the whole parameter of each one. Um, so I know where to tape and where to roll the adhesive. So this is how I'm doing this. I'll probably put this on first before I spray the bed liner because what I'll do is I'll probably spray the bed liner all the way down to uh to the edge of here so i'll tape this off you can see the line so black on black is fine all right so i clean this surface with pep, prep spray and as you see i have the lines marked where the um where the pads are going to go so i'm going to outline it with tape and then i can roll the glue on here roll the glue on the padding and uh mount it in there all right, I'm going to uh, make sure this is all degreased with some uh, prep spray, and then I'm going to use a green scrub pad. These are pretty aggressive to go ahead and uh, scuff the area where the adhesive is going to stick. Found a roller, this should do the trick. If not, I have the uh, brushes of backup. Oh, yeah. This has a working time of 20 minutes. 
Same here. Nice liberal coat. Don't let it spill over the edge though. Make sure the edges get through. Okay, as you see, it's curled up a bit. Uh, I'm just gonna tack a corner down here. It's not gonna be easy to move if you fucking put it down and uh, try to move it. That's why the tape is a good guide. All right? this piece too. Let me get that piece ready. Hydro turf baby. Pretty cool. All right, same thing on this side. I outlined it with tape, even in between here. So I know exactly where to place them, exactly where to put the glue. All right, it's scrubbed down. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with some prep spray just to make sure there's no grease. So once you see the sheen disappear, and it's all like a dull glue, it doesn't feel that sticky. But when it sticks to uh, itself, it's extremely sticky. So you want this to be dull, and you want this to be dull. As you see, looks more like a satin. Now by itself, it's not very, very tacky. But once you stick it to the other glue, um, it's very tacky, extremely tacky. So make sure you align your side first. Because once you set it down, it's not coming up. Center it, and stretch it a little bit. That's it. Prepping my ski for the uh, the second part of my paint uh, paint job scheme going on here. Okay, I'm all prepped. In these areas, I'm gonna going to be spraying uh, Raptor liner inside here as well. It is after it's sprayed. It should darken up and any sheen should go away. Almost. There's a little bit of sheen to it after it's dry, but I'm going to go ahead and recover these seats. I let them sit outside and they get all messed up. Plus, I accidentally uh, slashed part of it. <laughs> so, I'm going to pop all these staples out so I can remove the cover here. What I'll do is I'll just use this as a uh, template. And Okay, here's the material I'm using. Sometimes this, this material stretches both ways. But this one just stretches one way. It stretches this way. So I think I'm going to put the non-stretch um, way this way. 